Hey, just a quick side note, there is a small giveaway in this video, so obviously you can jump out at that exact time, but if you're gonna stay here, you're gonna learn a little bit more, but hey, who can stop you? It's your mouse, it's your bandwidth, you can jump around in video however and wherever you like. Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video, and in this video, we are going to talk about Digibox. In case you haven't heard about it, Digibox is a service started by Indian government who are competing in the space of Dropbox and Google Drive. Basically, it's a service which allows you to store your digital file on Digibox and they have pretty insane pricing. Just for absolutely free, they allows you to store up to 20 gigabytes and for paying merely a 30 rupees per month, you can store up to 2 terabyte. And I know these plans are absolutely lucrative, but I'm going to go ahead and do a small kind of a review for this Digibox. Now first, a smaller and a shorter review. When I first saw this service and looked at it, it's pretty amazing and to be fairly honest with you, as a version 1 in this product, I would say it's a fairly impressive start. Pricing is amazing and the internal UI and the way how you store the file, it looks pretty okay, but definitely there is a lot of room for improvement. But for a version 1 perspective, this service is just launched. I cannot compare it with the pioneers of this service like Dropbox. They have been in the market for really a long time and I should not compare this service which is just launched like a newborn baby to those gigantics, the mammoths of this industry. So as a version 1 start, it's a pretty solid start. But that's for a smaller, shorter version of the review. I have done a thorough inspection of the service and I would like to bring up my perspective about this service. So let me walk you through on my computer and show you that what are the potential flaws that I saw and where are the things that can be improved to make this service absolutely amazing. So I did a thorough check before making this video on Digibox. So I will be pointing out some of the things which I think are really, really important for the developers of Digibox and they have already missed that. So if you're watching this from anybody in the Digibox team, take notes. So Digibox is pretty amazing platform and the first thing that's gonna catch your eyes is this beautiful UI. There is like absolutely nothing to criticize about it. It's very, very minimalistic looks amazing and awesome and what's gonna caught your attention is gonna be the pricing so this surely will catch your attention and you can see there are monthly plans and there are yearly plans and you can see that's up to two uh, tv of spaces for 30 rupees like i would say yeah very very affordable pricing and to be honest best in the market but this doesn't mean that just because it's a lower end pricing we are gonna give them any slack they are charging pretty high end too on to smbs as well and they are customized plan i'll walk you on that but first let's see onto the product so this is what they are offering and everything now obviously what you would like to do is to share some of your files or to store some of your data just like you did do on the digital on the uh, Dropbox or Google Drives or anything like that. So I clicked on the login and it said, hey, you need to join in now. I clicked on the join in and then it moves me onto the page. Now this is a little confusing of a plan to get started. There should be a join button, which most of the people are used to. So you have to actually click on the join now and purchase now and stuff. Okay, I'll give you on that, not a big issue. But when you click on the join now, you have to provide a DigiSpace name. So I'm gonna call this one as test Digi space whatever you like to give and obviously this is available now this is the form that i have to fill in order to just join this which includes my name my email id my mobile number address gst numbers industry and this is a really long form i don't think so that's a pretty good idea i would love to have a buttons like sign up with google sign up with facebook and just be done within a few seconds. So that's my problem. Another problem that I saw here immediately, which bothered me a lot, is this there is a field of mobile number. And as soon as you enter the mobile number and you move on to the next field, it's gonna start sending you the OTP that you have to fill at the very end of it. And that is something I really don't like it. Let, you, let me give you an example. And there we go, and once you do this, the OTP fields open up and it's gonna start sending OTP on that number. And by the time you are filled, you are walking through and filling up this form, you're gonna see that your OTP has expired, you have to re-sign it, and sometimes, to be honest, it's not a great flow. So that's what I would all say up here. Now, once you're done with that, let me close that, you are greeted up inside. This is how the inside panel looks like. I try to upload a few photos, files, that works absolutely fine, but there is a big, big issue that I am nitpicking here. 
So let's go up here onto uh, pictures and I try to upload a video. Let me show you by uploading another video here. So I'm going to click on upload file and I'm going to drag and drop a pretty much heavy file, which is my Ansible file. And notice here, once I click on upload, there is no bar, no progress integration at how much file is uploaded, how much longer I have to wait. It just keeps on spinning. Not a good user experience, at least to me. But I have a fairly uh, high speed internet, so it shouldn't take much of the time and stuff. And this UI, is okay. I'm not too much impressed, not too much uh, disappointed here. It's okay, I would say that. So I'm going to go back quick access. I don't know how much long this is going to take back. So I'm going to go back up here and you can see in the my box section, when you click on that, they give you this access of all the folder based structure. You can go on to that. Another flaw that I saw, which I'm not really impressed. When I click on the picture, uh, you can just grab the URLs and all details about this. You can click on this and then they can, they give you actually more detail on that. So this is the overview. If you want to embed this photo somewhere, you can have this public address. And what they do in the public address is, let me show you, this is the UI. When you open up this, like there is no download button, there is no save as button or anything. I'm sure I can just drag and drop this, that's fine, I can do that, but this is not a great UI if I'm sharing any Digibox somewhere to here. Not really, like didn't even like it a little bit. On top of that, I would still say that this application is still in the bake-in process. Uh, so when, you, when I click on the video or anything like that, the video is visible and I can watch this video here. Uh, you can go ahead and have this one. That's okay. But when I click on embed and try to hit a public URL, let me copy that again and I go back onto this, any of my incognito tab. It's a public one. It should be available uh, to me there. But this is what I see here. Absolutely nothing. Probably this is the one case where I'm being hit with the error. But yeah, on overall, this is not really a good experience for at least for me. So yes, and there are a lot more options being up here. I haven't explored it like too much in depth. But whatever I have explored here, I would say from a version one perspective, it's okay. But it's not something yet which can move me from Dropbox or Google Drive up here. Couple of things more I would like to state up here. I have done a little bit up here. If you'll read their terms and condition, they are pretty standard, nothing finicky there. But they also openly say that we are using RackBank. In case you don't know, RackBank is one of the most pioneer company in providing you the bare metal or basically the data, uh, data center that you can have. And you can read more about them if you wish and all of that. Another thing which I am a little bit bothered about as a programmer is I need API. If you want me to move uh, from a system like Dropbox or Google Drive or anything, or you want, you obviously are selling this product to companies. So I looked up for a Digibox API, couldn't found anything at all. So if you, are, if you want that company should move up there, uh, then surely I would need that. And of course, uh, let me show you one more thing up here, that if I go up here into the upgrade plan, uh, this is where they mention all the upgrade plan. They need all of my details and stuff, all of that I've given them already, uh, no big deal there. And you can see that they are providing these individuals for this much of amount of money, which is not really bothering. But they are also offering this service to companies, SMBs. And SMBs do require API. I hope you understand that. They are not just here to put this. They can also uh, put up an S3 box or Amazon S3 or anything other services to just put their files. They need API access. And the beautifully crafted the API are, the more chances of the companies are to move it up here. But I would say it's a homegrown, homegrown product and I would give it a edge of being version one here. But I think these all errors and everything can be resolved pretty nicely, probably in the version two. And I'll definitely make more videos on having updates on the situation. How is it going right now? Okay, so this was a kind of a detailed overview of what I liked about the service, what I didn't like about the service. But definitely at this point of time, I'm not sold to this service. Despite their smaller and very affordable plans, I am looking forward that when and how they are going to expose their APIs so that more of the business and enterprise can actually use this service. But I think in the overall general, I think this is a right step in the right direction. We need some of such homegrown services, which not only can store my data points, 
clients, but also can provide me some of the storage services and some of the data centers here in India, which can be easily much more affordable just like this. Right now, entirety of the internet is all dependent majorly on the Amazon data centers, which to be honest, still to this date, just check out their CDN plans. Their CDN plan is most expensive only in India rest of the US and everything, they are very much, very much cheap. But if something this like can have a competition, I would say their plan can also drop down with the CDN, making things much more affordable for India. But that's really a long ahead as of now. But I would say that's a great start of getting started. And I think you should definitely give it a try. Try to store some of the things and see and let me know that how is it working out for you. Now, coming up on to the giveaway part, as you have already noticed, I'm giving away a whole lot of t-shirts and everything this year. So I'm gonna be sending one of you the I Write Code Classic t-shirt. In case you are interested in taking part of this, make sure you share this video and write a comment with using a hashtag Digibox. And let me know that what do you think that either you will be using this service or not? Let me know in the comment section and I will send one of you the classic I write code t-shirt. Now small, a small kind of a note here as well is also here that I can only ship these t-shirts to Indian user only. So make sure if you're writing that and taking part in it, uh, make sure you are somewhere in India. And also make sure when you are uh, putting up the comment, I'll click onto your account and we'll see on the about page of your YouTube account. If there is an email there, then only I can reach you out. Otherwise, I have to look somebody else in the comment section to give him the t-shirt. So make sure at least your email ID is visible in your about section and you share the video and you post down a comment using the hashtag Digibox. So let me know in the comment section and I will be sending you one classic I write code t-shirt. Okay, so I usually don't do these kinds of reviews and stuff, but this was actually a fun to do and I hope you have enjoyed this as well. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button on the video and consider hitting that subscribe probably right now or probably later as well. That's fine too. Let's go ahead and catch up in another such video. You never feel the way I feel You don't know if my love is real Baby, listen to me, here's the deal When you're not here, I'm not the same I'm needing a new chance